Hi, my name's Derek. I'm from glazy.org, and today I'm gonna to be talking about volumetric blending. So the first question is, what is a blend? Well, a blend is a mix of two or more different recipes. You could be blending different recipes of pizza dough or coffee, or you could be blending two or more different recipes of glazes. Today we'll be looking at a line blend, which is the simplest of the blends and only involves two recipes, the left recipe and the right recipe. In the example you see here, the left recipe is simply a clear glaze. The right recipe is the same clear glaze, but adding 0.4% cobalt oxide. Today I'm gonna to be mixing up a similar test where the left glaze is a clear glaze and the right glaze is a clear glaze with mason stain at plus 8%. Line blends were originally popularized for glaze testing by Ian Curry. Here's a diagram from his website showing how to prepare a line blend for volumetric blending. First, measure equal weights of the left and the right glaze. Then add water and mix and sieve as normal. And then add enough water to both glazes so that they are equal in volume. From there, you can use volumetric blending to mix the five test glazes. In this example, we'll also be making a line blend of five glazes. We'll be using a syringe to make all of the blends. When I do volumetric blending, I prefer to use sample sizes of around 20 milliliters. This is the smallest amount of glaze that I've found suitable for making blends. As you see in this diagram, on the left-hand side, we have a pure or 100% sample of the left glaze. On the right-hand side, we have a pure 100% sample of the right glaze. Only the second, third, and fourth glazes will be blends of the left and the right glaze. Even though my glaze batches will be 20 milliliters, I'm using a 30 milliliter syringe so that there's enough room for me to mix the two blends inside the syringe. Here you see I'm using a BD syringe. It has a very nice rubber stopper which makes it very easy to pull in and out. Some syringes don't have this and you shouldn't buy them. Here are my left and right glazes, already mixed and sieved, and I've added water so that they are of equal volume. The left glaze is the clear glaze. The right glaze is the clear glaze with 8% added mason stain. In advance, I've prepared five test tiles to which I'll apply the five test glazes. On the back of each test tile, I've used an underglaze pencil to mark the glazy ID of the glaze, as well as the blend amount. Be sure to mix the glazes thoroughly before preparing a test sample. So the first test tile is just 100% of the left glaze. All I have to do is pour the left glaze into the container lid and then dip the test tile. I use flat test tiles because they're much easier to dip into such a small amount of glaze. I dip the test tile once for a few seconds, lift it up and wait until there's no more sheen, and then dip one side of it for a few more seconds. This way I have two different thicknesses of glaze, which gives me more information in the fired result. Finally, I wipe off the bottom of the test tile using a sponge. I pour the left glaze back into the cup. Our second glaze is our first blended glaze between the left and the right recipes. Looking at our chart, we're going to need 15 milliliters of the left glaze and 5 milliliters of the right glaze. I first fill the syringe with 15 milliliters of the left clear glaze. I then clean off the syringe and extract five milliliters of the right glaze. Once the blended mixture of 20 milliliters is in the syringe, 
I let in some air, close off the hole, and shake it to mix the two glazes. This mixture can now be dispersed into the container lid. I dip the next test tile into this new blended mixture. The test tile is dipped a second time on the left hand side and then wiped off with a sponge. After the application is complete, I can clean off the syringe, spray off the lid, and get ready for the next test. Before I use the syringe, I make sure that both my glazes are mixed well. This is test number three, the middle blend test, and has equal amounts of both glazes. So I'm gonna put in 10 milliliters of the left glaze and 10 milliliters of the right glaze. Once again, I shake the mixture inside the syringe and then disperse it into the container lid. Grabbing the third test tile, I dip it twice, clean off the bottom, then clean off the lid and the syringe in preparation for the next test. The fourth test will require only five milliliters of the left glaze and 15 milliliters of the right glaze. Once again, the two glazes are mixed inside the syringe, dispersed into the container lid, the test tile is dipped, and the bottom of the test tile is cleaned off. Our final test tile will only have the right glaze. So all we have to do is pour the right glaze into the container lid and then dip the test tile. You can see here the five test tiles that we just made, and it's obvious that we're blending from one glaze to another. When we're finished with the test tiles, we should see a very even and smooth gradient from one glaze to another. Of course, the colors are gonna change a lot after the firing. So in this tutorial on volumetric blending, I hope you've seen how easy it is to make a very nice line blend of two glazes. From there, you can easily move on to triaxial and quadraxial blends. They're the same as the line blend, just a little more complicated. All right, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, feel free to message me at Derek at or join the Facebook Glazy Support Group. Thank you.